Will your silver protect you from pension collapse? <laughs> or will the pension bubble burst when you're least prepared? Pension collapse. <laughs> Is it close? What are the risks? And what am I doing to protect my Yankee pension? Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. In fact, if, if you wouldn't mind, check out um, the subscription button down below there. Press it, maybe even hit the bell so you know you can see my next video and know when it's coming. I'd really appreciate that too. All right, for those of you in public service, whether it be a, a teacher, a firefighter, um, law enforcement, uh, judges, other government officials, sanitation workers, um, even the vanishing toll collectors. Thank you so much for all you do. And I know one of the reasons why you love your job is because of the defined benefit pension. Okay? I mean, really, that has been, and in some cases still is, a big draw to working in the public sector. So, so if you don't know what I mean by that, what you know, a defined benefit pension. Let me just explain. It it it's a plan that works very similar to the Social Security uh, uh, plan. So you, know, you pay in, and you're given a guaranteed payout when you retire. I mean, this is a, a super sweet deal <laughs> for workers because uh, in most cases, most. Uh, money or more money is paid out than what goes in. And since the amount is defined or guaranteed, you, you get a fixed amount when you retire. You know, anyway, so that's the public sector. In the private sector, the pension is, is pretty much a, a quaint financial fringe benefit that also promised a, a nice income during retirement but you know, it's a perk of bygone days. You know, uh, I remember my very first full-time job, and uh, it was in Boston, and I remember it was a big firm, and they were telling me all about this pension. <laughs> like, okay, shoot, I was like just fresh out of college. I was young, totally naive. I didn't care much about a pension. I was young. I didn't need that. I wasn't even thinking about retirement. But, you know, pensions are, were a really important aspect about picking a job. Plus, plus pensions, uh, both private and public, was a reward for a long-term company job, a, a long-term loyalty, if you will. People worked a large portion of their lives with just one organization. And then after many years, based on you know your salary and the years you worked, you'd get a monthly payment all the way up until you died. That's a sweet deal, huh? <laughs> it sounds great, right? <laughs> and, I, and I grew to appreciate what that company was offering. But the cost of pensions really started to become completely unsustainable. So in the private sector... Enter the 401k, which became really widespread in the early 80s because it promised to be a cheaper alternative to companies. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about 401ks. I, I don't want to spend much time there, but suffice it to say that the idea was to you know, shift away the burden of taking care of employees in their old age. <laughs> you know, Instead of a um, defined benefit, employees would be part of a defined contribution plan, okay? It's, it was a big shift, and it was a big win for corporate America. They loved it. <laughs> you know, and, and, and to be fair, there are some really good uh, 401k plans out there. Uh, many companies offer a match. Some of them are really, really generous matches, uh, but it was nothing, nothing like the cost of a defined benefit pension plan. And so the 401k pretty much wiped out the private pension. Now, of course, with a 401k, you are at the whim of the stock and bond markets, okay? 
You got to be careful there. But, you know, you're in control, right? And hopefully you're dollar cost averaging in your 401k. You're rebalancing appropriately as you get closer to Yankees age <laughs> or older. <laughs> I actually stayed at that first company for 18 years. <laughs> well, I mean, I've worked at like uh, four companies since then. Never have gotten that close to <laughs> again, right? That first firm provided a, a fully vested pension for me when I reach retirement age. Well, that company, of course, introduced the you know the four hundred one k in the early nineties. I took a full advantage of that as well. In fact, I think I, I maxed it out when I got married. So. 401k was also very important, but they had the pension. All right, so enough about me. What is the big problem, okay? And how does precious metals enter in, okay? So I have laid out here some some of my precious metals. Here's the uh, Yankee cannon all shot out. <laughs> but, you know, I have other ones like this uh, Cougaran, uh, a kook right here. One of my favorites, uh the guinea shield from when I first started stacking. This is one of the first premium pieces I bought. Really love that one. Ooh, look at these. I got some bars. <laughs> Silver dragons. Look at that. This one was a special bar from my son. It says Yankee stacking on it. This one, though. Oh, check this out. You know what this is, guys? Mm, if you're new to my channel, you wouldn't know this. This is number two dragons bar. Number two, the second one he ever poured. Very precious to me. Anyways, got a lot of stuff here. Oh, and one of my favorite, this is uh this was the first government minted bullion I ever started stacking. Canadian maple leafs. Love the Canadian maple leafs. In the public arena, the real big problem is the is state pensions. They are really severely underfunded. Which ones? Well, let me show you a chart. I put together a Yankee special <laughs> of the best and worst states when it comes to how well their uh, state pension funds are, you know, how well they're funded. Okay, this is as of uh, 2017. So check this out. All right, so here's the best and worst state funded pensions. Green for best, red for worst. Uh, top 10, look at this, Wisconsin, 103%. I don't know what Wisconsin is doing, but if you're from Wisconsin or if you know, please clue me in in the comments below, but that is incredible. 103, South Dakota, 100, Tennessee, New, New York. That surprises me, <laughs> but 95% funded. Uh, Idaho, North Carolina, Utah, Nebraska, Washington, Oregon, ooh. Silver Dragons, there's your state. Pretty good, all right? So that's impressive. But what isn't impressive is the bottom 10. This is the trouble area, guys. Tax, I'm sorry, <laughs> Massachusetts, where uh, I'm originally from, 60%. Then Phil, uh, Pennsylvania, Hawaii, South Carolina, Rhode Island, boy. Uh, Colorado, Connecticut, man, there's a lot of New England states here. Illinois, New Jersey, and Kentucky. Those last three are in terrible shape. But why? Why are states in so much trouble? Well, for one, politicians, okay? They play a big role in this issue, all right? They, they've promised not to touch public pensions or modify them in, in any way, while at the same time underfunding them with insufficient tax revenue. <laughs> Instead, they pander to their constituencies in order to get elected or, or, or re-elected or whatever. This, this is most noticeable with government workers and unions. Politicians have kowtowed to the demands of these groups, and that has led to massive pension bubbles in a lot of states. I'm sure people are going to say, hey, Yankee, I'm in a union. I've worked hard for my pension. I deserve it. Or some of you, you know, federal state employees out there, you know, you're going to say, I've worked hard as a public servant and I, and I was promised a pension and I deserve it. Okay. I don't disagree at all. 
my dad worked for over 40 years in the public school system, and he enjoys a decent pension in his whole old age. So he should. He earned it. But the situation is out of control because of gross mismanagement. For example, in Illinois, uh, was it number three worst? <laughs> the pension benefits have grown by more than 900% since 1987, roughly when I started working. That's incredible. 900%. All right, so that was public pensions. How about private pensions? I, and I can speak to this a little bit more uh, closely because I work in the private sector. <laughs> Most of them are long gone, okay? But for those that remain, like, like mine, the risk with those is where those pensions are being invested, okay? And the pressure on these companies to cover their pension obligations as to where they're investing, okay? Well, I reviewed my company's holdings, okay? Uh, I looked at where my <laughs> where the pension was being invested and you know it was in treasuries uh equities mostly blue chip uh, stocks but a lot of bonds okay mostly corporate bonds which i found amazing um and what was missing <laughs> was precious metals like this stuff right i mean <laughs> oh man they 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 had no gold and silver in the portfolio uh, no gold or silver uh, ETFs, uh, no mining stocks. That's probably w way too risky, right? But um, yeah, I wish they would at least, you know, the pension managers, the, uh, the lawyers, executives charged with administrating that pension fund would, would I don't know, see the dangers that are coming and, and, and maybe include a little bit of gold and silver in the portfolios funding my pension. No such luck. Nope. <laughs> They're not doing it. <laughs> uh, now as to the uh, pressure to cover the obligations for all those former employees, those that, you know, have getting near retirement age. Uh, <laughs> you know what they did? They offered me when I turned 50, a lump sum payoff. I don't have the paperwork with me, but when I opened it, I was like, what? I know they were desperate to do whatever they can to get out from underneath this, uh, you know, the pension agreement they had made with me, but I didn't do it. And I'm going to tell you why I didn't do it at the end of this video. So hang with me, okay? <laughs> pension funds have to average 7%, 7% annually just to meet their obligations. 7%. That is, that's next to impossible to do without accepting riskier and riskier bonds, mostly corporate bonds. When the recession hits, and I do mean when, the bonds that public pensions are into are likely going to drop into junk bond status. I mean, shoot, about half of corporate bonds are triple B rated. That's like one step above junk. <laughs> if these triple B rated government, I'm sorry, corporate bonds um, go to junk, they become crap basically. The pension administrators will have to sell these junk bonds because they're not allowed to have junk bonds in their portfolio. And that's gonna tank the stock market. What am I going to do with this massive pension bubble that's about to pop? Well, let, let me start with this. I am not counting on either Social Security or my pension. Okay? Right there. I'm just not counting on it. Hope I have them, but I'm not going to count on them. And in my video right up there um, about my three baskets of wealth, I talk about the three things that I, I focus on savings, cash, you got to have cash, uh, be the bank, have that cash on hand, not in the public bank, private mortgage in, uh, investing or private mortgage lending, that's with cash and retirement accounts, and this stuff, precious metals, okay? <laughs> you know, yes, I do have some higher premium stuff like these Queen's Beasts, 
which are absolutely gorgeous. I love the Queen's Beast, especially the dragon. But, you know, it, silver and gold, that's, that is very important for my retirement. So the only exposure I really have with the stock and bond markets are with my pension. <laughs> and that brings me back to why I didn't take out that pension money when I was offered that lump sum. <laughs> Seriously, do you know how tempting that was? I, kept, I, I All I had to do was check it. And I talked to Mrs. Yankee, and we were like sitting there for a while trying to figure out what the best move was. I, man, I could have put more money into you know the private mortgage lending. Had a much better uh, you know um, uh, you know monthly stream of revenue. It would have been really nice to have. Um, I would have bought a lot more of this. I mean, seriously, maybe I would have had a whole battery of Yankee cans. I don't know. I definitely would have gotten more gold and silver. But I didn't do it. And I didn't do it for two reasons. One, it was only a fraction, a small fraction of my overall pension amount. I mean, it was shockingly small. It was disappointing to see how small it was. And, and... You know, guys, you, my three baskets of wealth are, are quite conservative. I am a conservative contrarian investor, all right? And you know, frankly, I was willing to take a little bit of risk uh, on this on this ride, you know, with, with the pension. So I let it ride. If the lump sum was closer to the full amount or if I was already invested in the markets with, say, my 401k, which I'm not, I probably would have just grabbed it. Either of those two scenarios, I would have taken the lump sum right away, but I didn't. So, bottom line, <laughs> I am, you know, probably estimating the odds of maybe one in four that I'll never see a dime of my pension. Maybe one in three, okay? I hope I don't lose it, but if I lose that pension, if it just vanishes, I do have the private mortgage lending to help sustain me. And worst case, if that can't cut a stagflation, you know, crisis or whatnot, I mean, we're probably in, in a, uh, an SHTF situation. And that's when the stack of gold and silver that I am stacking like crazy could possibly be my financial savior. That is how silver and gold can protect you from pension collapse. That's how I believe it potentially is going to protect me. So do you have a public or a private pension? Are you concerned about what's coming with the pension bubble? Or, or do you live in one of those really hard hit states that just has a terrible funding for their state pensions? And one last thing, how does precious metals enter into your retirement? And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Even hit the bell icon if you're a true Yankee stacking fan <laughs> and don't want to miss my next video. So that's it. Until next time, I hope your day <laughs> is A-OK. -okay.